Hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good time zone. I hope everyone is doing well. Welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Um, we're going to jump right into it here. I think we're in the midst of a trial. We are. Um, so, last time... Um, oh, that was it. Last time, so we started the trial and talked to... Um, an old man witness who they haven't specifically said is Yanni yet, but I'm assuming that's who it is. Uh, the person in the lift with Edgeworth's father when he was killed. Um, and now Von Karma has taken, uh, has, has called Edgeworth to the stand because Larry Butts bought us a little bit of time. Um, so, uh, let's see what's going to happen here. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? F find him, quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Ooh, Jeopardy. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Oh, we <laughs> so I ended last time right at the end of the court session. Okay. December 27th, 1.22pm. District Court. Defendant Lobby number two. Yay, Nick. You did it. Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I'd sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you, to get it off my chest, but... Hmm. I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. To be continued, excuse me? <laughs> that would have been a heck of a cliffhanger to end on. <laughs> Let's save the progress just while we're here. And we'll head into day four, I think. Soon, at least. Or, yeah, we'll continue investigating for day three. December 27th to 11pm, Wright & Co. Law Officers. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. 
Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? S swooning? Me? Oh. Oh, yes. I do remember feeling faint. Right on. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Uh huh? Me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. Hi, Larry. Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> well, that's a long laugh, but seriously, Nick. That boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious, but Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But what I do know is... I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? But, but why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? <clears throat> Enough with the silent treatment. Oh, damn. Nick. Why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait, was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me, Miles and Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, hey, Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Uh, um... Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Hmm. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A cl class trial? Let's hear about this then. You remember, Larry? Spring, end of third grade? A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Huh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So, they thought you did it? Yeah, the kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. I, I didn't do it. Guilty, he did it. Guilty, he did it, miss. Give the money back. You're such a meanie. No one play with him. Just admit you did it. You can't hide the truth. Tell us the truth. We're not going to play with you anymore. He shouldn't really be allowed in the relay race or on the library committee. Oh my god, that's a lot of... Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. Oh, look at him with his little spiky hair. I, I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. Objection! <laughs> You shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs. <laughs> of course, Miles speaks like that as a kid. Miles? It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? Oh, it was Edgeworth's money. No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any, has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. But, 
but Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? This is always how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. Hell yeah, Edgeworth. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. After the trial. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney, just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then a few months late. Oh, munch. Wow, good words. Let's try that again. Then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, ma manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the idea I used to know at all. That's what I thought too. I tried to get in touch with him, I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he'd become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... that's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. And I'm the only one that should kiss his lips. I mean... Uh, <laughs> Whoa, Nick. So, so, is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Oh, Nick. Nick. Nick, we have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right, it very well may be. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Oh, what's been cleaned out then? Oh, the original... Blurry photos cleaned out. There's a bunch of stuff between the autopsy and... Because the gun was over here, so there's at least two items that have been removed. Or three, I don't know. Right, where do we go then? Let's see if we can talk to Edgeworth. December 27th, detention center, visitor's room. You look as grim as always. Hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it, in third grade? Lunch money? Oh. Oh, right, yes. I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. 
You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? Because he can't live with the idea of someone who is possibly guilty getting away with something. Or like someone who is guilty getting away with something ever again because that's what he feels happened to his father's case. But like that's my that's my hunch on this. You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me and you want me to defend criminals. I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen, oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. Yeah. So that's about what I was thinking then. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But... but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it's impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job, to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's now well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right. Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. <laughs> it's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Can we present... this? Sorry, I'm not sure I can help you with that. Okay, we can't. What if we present the parrot? Also no. Okay, let's go somewhere else then. Let's head to the boat rental shop. December 27th, Gord Lake Park, entrance. Hey pal, long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, eh? I got so worked up I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No prob pal, thanks to you we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Okay, hear me out. Love triangle between Gumshoe, Phoenix and Edgeworth. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. Ah! No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lotto was camping? The woods are off limits to camping and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lotto's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Okay. I'm guessing we'll find Larry here, maybe. December 27th, Gord Lake Public Beach. Huh? The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. 
I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. Oh, okay. So it is just guiding us straight to the boat rental shop. December 27th, boat rental shop. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ahem. I'd know that clearing of the throat anywhere. It's Grossberg. Yep. Aha! Hello! What might you be doing here? I don't know what I did for his voice. Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg, this is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? December 27th, Caretaker's Shack. Nobody's home. Hello, hello, Squawk. Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello, hello, Squawk. Can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello, hello, Squawk. Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great, now the bird's going to hate me. Let's just examine anything. It doesn't look like he used this kitchen much. You're right. I guess the whole pasta restaurant thing was a lie. What, you thought he was telling the truth? Hmm, everything's cold. Looks like he didn't turn his heater on. I guess he hasn't been back here since the trial. That fishing pole looks expensive. Maybe we should bring it to Detective Gumshoe. Don't you think the caretaker wouldn't mind? Well, we can just leave him the metal detector in exchange. Uh, maybe we'd better not. I mean, it could be counted as evidence. Yeah! What's wrong? Huh? Oh, never mind. What? Tell me. Just, when I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing a Pink Princess special this week. Oh. See? That's why I didn't want to tell you. Oh no. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? 1228, Squawk. Let's open it, Nick. Oh, that's uh, 28th of December, which is when the DL6 incident happened. I don't know if that's something the game told me before and I've just remembered that, or if that's something I've just connected on my own, but <laughs> I think a couple of times ago it said that the anniversary of the, that trial was coming up. Um, I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Oh, but hey, he keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? How oh, boring. Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Ed Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Nick, why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? Right, they specified perfect handwriting. So I'm half wondering if Von Karma is connected. Because I don't know who else would be instructing him to do this. And I think Von Karma is going to be jealous that Edgeworth is getting a similar reputation to him. That's like, that's my just cold read on the situation. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. 
When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Letter from the safe added to the court record. Okay, that's really good. There's nothing left in the safe. I wonder why the caretaker didn't take the letter with him. He left in a hurry, right? I don't think he even came back here after the trial. I'm guessing these are the same. Say, Nick, don't people usually put pictures of fish up on the wall to boast about them? Uh, yeah, I guess so. You mean pictures of the fish they caught, right? Right, but don't all the fish on the wall here look really puny to you? Well, you know what they say. You should have seen the one that got away. Except the one that got away from us was the caretaker, and we did see him. Why do I feel like we're having two different conversations here? Okay, is there anything else we can do here? I'm not sure. Nothing in here, at least. So let's head back out. The caretaker must have run for the hills, huh? Yeah, looks like it. He didn't seem like a bad person. I don't know, those people called Yanni. Can't trust him. <laughs> There's some boats floating at the dock. Okay. Except the murder wasn't committed on a boat. Nick, the forest. There's someone in there. Oh. You're right, there's a few policemen in there. They must be looking for the caretaker. Good luck. Okay. Back to the public beach. Back to the entrance. Okay, let's go to the detention center. Let's see if we can present this letter. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm. This came out of the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge on me? Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he was following you this letter. So he was following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance? Wait, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. But what is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? That's what I've been saying. Yogi. The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in the elevator together 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long it felt like forever. The air thinned and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help, get us out. Don't shout, you'll just use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called, called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused, caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. See, that <laughs> in real life, if that happened, it would potentially, I think, be changed to manslaughter rather than murder, but it would still be a crime. If he wasn't, like, in control of his facilities, as they say, it's, it, he's still responsible for it. Huh? But isn't that strange? 
This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. I think... I think the time has come to tell all. The nightmare. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help, get us out. Don't shout, you'll just use up more oxygen. I... I can't breathe. You... you're using up my air. What? Stop breathing my air. I, I'll stop you. Ah, what? What are you... Stop breathing my air! No, father. He's attacking father. Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I pick up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father. Ah. And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. B but... That's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you, you mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick. There is someone else who knows about DL6. There is indeed. Grossberg Law Offices, let's go. December 27th, Grossberg Law Offices. M Mr. Grossberg. Ah, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding. I can't believe you're not. My, my, my. Just calm down and tell me what's happened. It's Mr. Edgeworth. He, he... he... I see. So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream. Only a dream. I wonder... But what? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled? Well... Also, consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagined. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired and the deed was done. No, I, I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder and his career as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. Thus he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer, now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister. Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. 
The result, he has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's where my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right, everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son. It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. Let's go back to the detention center. Okay, I can't do anything here. Let's go to the Criminal Affairs Department. December 27th, Police Department, Criminal Affairs. Hmm, looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gone back yet. Gumshoe, he won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boat shop caretaker. He shouted something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. I'm guessing we can't do anything here then. Um, let's go back here. One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. What do you think we should do now, Maya? You would know best, Nick. Just do what you do. That should work. Thanks. Well, had any good ideas? This is all tied to the DL6 incident. We'd better find out as much as we can about that murder before tomorrow. Something that happened back then has a hold on Edgeworth and it won't let go. Let's go back here. Oh, so this is the letter? Aha, I thought this might work. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Von Karma's. Do you have any idea who wrote this? Manfred Von Karma. Hmm. Could it be Manfred Von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Hmm. Von Karma, Von Karma. Wait, you're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But, but that means... The one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct, Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Well, that's the question, isn't it? If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Hell no. But, but how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gre Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. Oh. 
What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Von Karma is going to bring up DL6, you can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know? I know that. I, I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But, but Nick, Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials, hmm? Now, can we go to the detention center? Oh, we can't, no. Let's go back to the detention center. Can we talk? No. And now the criminal affairs department. Yes, now we can do something here. December 27th, police department, criminal affairs. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check the records room again. Well, now I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yes, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Uh, Nick, let's hurry. Probably tampering with evidence. Here we go. December 27th, Police Department, Records Room. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. That's an open drawer. Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says, Unsolved Cases, Evidence. Hmm. Unsolved Cases? Nick! The file for DL6 is completely empty. What? What are you doing in here? Ah! V Von Karma. You. How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? Ahem, I beg your pardon, you see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me, needless things to be crushed. You can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. Uh, um, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed that veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karma, you had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. Hmm. So you did. But what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean. You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. 
You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. We were right. So Von Karma is going to bring up the DL6 in court tomorrow. Can we present anything? Oh, maybe... Mm, is it a good idea to confront him on the letter? I think we probably have to. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. So, so you admit it? Y you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter? Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? He's gonna take it. Nick, what is that thing? A stun gun, for self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000... Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. Now, give me the letter. No. No! Whoa, what are you... Nick, run! Oh, Jesus. Maya! Out of my way! You know, I think that constitutes a crime. Ugh, oh, he got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence, all of it. Back to having no clues. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Maya. Maya, open your eyes. Maya. The letter. Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Are you okay? I... I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one front shot, shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya. Ugh, there has to be some way I can help her. I'd better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya, she's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 incidents, evidence number seven, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. DL6 bullet stashed in a pocket, and this is going to show that it probably didn't fire from the gun that uh, Edgeworth threw, but a different gun that belonged... Uh, no, the same gun that was used in this case. That's my prediction. I, I don't know how many predictions I've made and how many have been right or wrong, but... Um, we'll see. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. To be continued, and that is where we're going to finish up today. Um, this is a bit of a longer episode. Let's save the progress. But it looks like we're going into the final day of this, so next week's episode is probably going to be a bit of a long one as well. Because I think I'm just going to go through the entire final day of the trial, if I can. It might be a bit of a, a bumper episode, <laughs> so to speak. But yes, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for all the support and the likes and comments on this series. They all mean a lot to me and it's uh, it's great to see, so thank you. Um, yeah, next one we'll finish episode four. I don't know if there is anything after that. I don't. It, I, it feels kind of like this could be the final episode, but it could just be that this is like halfway through the game or something. I don't know. Um, but yes, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will hopefully see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.